Thanks, Allison, and welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. We're really excited about today's show because we're going to talk about content marketing. But I don't have just one guest on the show. We have three of the top content marketing experts out there today. We have Joe Paluzzi of the Content Marketing Institute. We have Jim Burns of Abitage, and we have Doug Kessler of Velocity Partners in London. So, hi, Joe. <laughs> And there's Doug, and Jim will be on here. All right. <laughs> We've got all three of you. So let's, let's get started, and let's start talking about content marketing. Um, I think, Jim, I'm going to throw the first question at you. I think video today is bigger than it's ever been, and I think there's a greater demand for video. And one of the things you and I have chatted about is the challenge of video. There's the high-end video, the expensive, the TV cameras, and the, the user, you know, the flip cameras and the low-end stuff, non-professional. Um, you either get low quality or very expensive, which doesn't scale. What are your thoughts on video, Jim? It, well, it's a huge topic, Jeff. And, um, you know, in short, I think what we're seeing, and Joe, I think, should speak to this even more, is uh, buyer preferences, audience preferences for not only short form content, but really click and inform me, uh, lend themselves uh, to video. Um, the problem that we see with clients is that they have an, a very traditional uh, mindset around what video is and how you, how you create it. And so if you just say to somebody, hey, let's make a video, what's the first thought? We've got to get a camera, lights, we got to go shoot someone. We got to do nonlinear video editing, and for a lot of content uh, requirements, that the constraints around traditional video creation uh, knock it out of the box as a practical, cost-effective, timely solution when we're trying to build content uh, with very short windows. So we're just seeing people doing a whole rethinking of the whole space of video. On the one hand, got to have it. On the other end, and then part of that is video is content, and so it has to, in our view, meet the requirements of the content marketing, relevance, uh, compelling and informational, and that sort of thing. And yet, on the other hand, it's inherently expensive, difficult to do, requires time, and it typically results in uh, what we call a point production, where content marketing today is all about how do I build content extensions for multiple purposes and multiple audiences? So there's some real issues around video, particularly as we move from sort of one or two, three videos and I'm done, I'm exhausted and so is my budget, to, hey, how do we start looking at producing this for very regular communications? Thanks, Jim. I, I think you're right. Video is changing. Joe, what is your thought about using video in marketing today? Well, I think to Jim's point, there's no doubt that the importance of video, that everybody has a device with them that they can view a video at any time when they're searching for any kind of problems. But I think the, the challenge today is, well, first of all, most marketers, any size organization, are still struggling with textual content. So now we're saying, oh, no, we're going to move to video, and we're already struggling where we're at at the basic level. But I think, first of all, you have to go back to the beginning and say, why are we doing this in the first place? Uh, most marketers, and these are even billion-dollar uh, brands with mar seasoned marketers, they get so focused on channel, they don't think about why we're actually doing this in the first place. They say, oh, what are we doing on Pinterest or what are we doing on LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube or whatnot? They get so channel-focused. And really, if you're looking at a content marketing strategy, your channel is like step seven. So we really want to pull it back and figure out, you know, what are we trying to do? Why are we trying to do it? Who are we talking to? Do we have our buyer personas done? Do we understand who those customers are? Do we understand their pain points? And then we try to develop a story from that point. Does that story make sense to produce that in some kind of video story, visual storytelling form? Then we can look at those options. So I guess I would tell everybody listening to this is, Let's start from the beginning first, make sure we understand why we're doing it, that we're actually creating stories that are relevant, make sense for our marketing. Because as Jim was saying, I think a lot of people get into, oh, we're going to do some kind of a product video, or it's going to be talking more about us. We've got to remember that our, that our stories that we tell visually have to focus on the needs of our customers. 
a good good point, Joe. And I think I'll, I'll toss this at Doug. Uh, what Joe talked about is the importance of starting at the beginning and asking those fundamental questions about, you know, who is our audience and what are their pains. Uh, and, and telling a story. Doug, what is your thought about the need for, you focus on B2B, I know. What, if, what about marketers struggling to really focus at the beginning and understand, you know, build the foundation before they build the rest of the house? Yeah, I think it's the essential point, really. I mean, you started with video. Um, clients start from all kinds of different places. will come in saying, I want an X, and it might be I want to do something in social media. I want to do something in video. I, I want to make a, you know, I want to have a, a party. Whatever it is that, that it, the tactic is, um, we we're just like Joe and saying, hey, let's dial back. Before we say the answer is video or the answer is whatever, let's get down to the basics. What are you trying to do? What does your audience really want to know about? And how do we connect those two things? Um, so, you know, we often find the same thing. And sometimes it's that... A, one of their competitors has done a cool video. And so the first thing is, let's right. do a video. I definitely think what's happening now, though, and I'm sure, Joe, you probably see this, is it's, you know, we're past the tipping point in content marketing. And so it's, we're, we are definitely moving beyond the point solution of I need an X. And it's more, okay, let's look at this content program. Let's do, let's do content right in an ongoing way. And that already lends itself to starting at the beginning. Content strategy is kind of really rising. And that gives us an opportunity as an agency to say, all right, let's sit down and start with goals, which is just the only place to start. But it's amazing how, how much marketing doesn't even start there. Interesting. And you're right. Joe, I think because you focus, you're the Content Marketing Institute and you see the big picture, what do you see as the state of content marketing today? Well, I, I would agree with Doug that the point is, is, they're not asking why we're doing this anymore. I think most organizations we run into understand that they need to be t telling compelling stories. They need to be creating valuable, relevant, compelling content on a consistent basis as part of their marketing uh, program and maybe as the central part of that program. This is, I mean, this is a whole new thing. I mean, content marketing has been going on for hundreds of years, but it, now that it's so central, where, you know, consumers can shut us off in a heartbeat. And if we're not interesting in some way, we're not going to get their attention. We know that. Marketers know that today. They're smarter about that. So now we get to the really hard part, which is the fun part for me, probably for, for both Doug and Jim, is, is that you now have these major complex challenges within the marketing department. And the biggest, and I'm, this is just top of mind because I just had a conversation about it yesterday with another marketer. We're so siloed. In most organizations, you have you have email, you have marketing, you have PR, you have corporate comm, you have social media, you have mobile, you have all these different silos, and everyone's creating content, and they're all sort of doing it disjointly. So I think the goal is to get to that point where we're internally in a company all on the same page, telling the same kind of stories for the right reasons, and not just doing it haphazard. I talked to a marketer the other day in the email department that they weren't talking to the folks that are creating content and social media. It boggles my mind. It's a big company. It boggles my mind that that's not happening. But that's, the reg that's, that's more of the regular case than not, where people aren't talking about this and everyone feels they own content. So I think to Doug's point now, we're just, we know that we need to do this and we're trying to figure out what the strategies make sense for our different product lines and our customers. And we're trying to figure out a way that we can scale it because this is the, going to be the new normal, but we're not even close to that point yet. So there's a lot of pain to get to before we really can say, we really do know how to do content marketing well. A lot of people are still at the first inning of a nine inning ball game. Mm, interesting. And I think, Jim, I want to throw this question at you. Joe brought up a good point of not having a consistent story. And you sell to a lot of large companies, Jim, at, you know, Teradata and Sybase and this thing. What do you see about the need to have leadership in content marketing, whether it's a chief content officer or a CMO, but somebody who owns the company's story? What is your thought, Jim? Well, yes, of course. But to Joe's point, you know, if you're still struggling with strategy, you know, the leadership has to actually start with all that we've talked about. Look, one of the big challenges that I see 
um, is many of us see that content marketing is the way to go, and maybe people are agreeing with that. You get the head bob. But at the top areas, I think there's still constraints that the CEO, the chief sales officer, uh, the chief financial officer, who have never understood marketing, maybe haven't cracked a book in marketing in 10 or 15 years, let alone the last five years when marketing has really gone through such a transformation, um, lack a belief system in it generally and in, and, in, and in this in particular. So I think one of the things that, you know, Joe, I appreciate with the Content Marketing Institute is the content that's coming out of there, I'm sending to CEOs and chief sales officers and chief financial officers of customers and prospects because, you know, if they're not on board, the sales guy shows up and says to the marketing guy, I don't care about something that's going to pay off in 12 or 18 months. I want you to run this event. I want you to build this content. I want you to run this webinar. I want you to make these videos. You get people getting whipped around. No wonder marketing heads turn over so quickly. So, you know, there's a lot of issues there around leadership, but it's a uh, it's, content marketing officer is a great idea. It's a dream. I mean, let's get, let's get the people that are driving tactics, never mind strategy yet, that the chief sales officer and the CEO and the financial officer aren't, they're dictating where these investments go. And I really feel for a lot of marketing heads, they're getting whipped around by, by so many people that think that, uh, that they know better or that they're in charge. You know, it's interesting because uh, uh, Cape Post and Eloqua just did a, a white paper on, on the ROI of content marketing, and I was struck by one chart in there that showed the break-even point between paid search and content marketing was 19 months. It was over a year and a half of doing content marketing on an ongoing basis where content marketing becomes less, more cost-effective than paid search. So you, you've got a great point, Jim, about... Content marketing is not an event. It's not, but it's something you have to stay with. Uh, Doug, what is your thought on the need to do content marketing and stay with it and stay the course? Yeah, it is a long-term thing. More and more at Velocity, we're asking clients to commit longer term and say, we want to do something for you that works. And the one-off hits aren't really what works. What works is sustained programs where you can do stuff, measure it, tweak as you go, and build on that. And that does take time. So we're less and less interested in the, you know, crank me out a, an ebook or do me a month of a program. It really is ongoing. But uh, another thing we've noticed, which speaks to what Jim was just saying, um, we have quite a process from start to finish to create a, a content marketing strategy and then to execute and to measure and to improve it. But we built a new stage in recently, which is before our first step, which is kind of an alignment uh, workshop that brings in the other people from the business to teach them what content marketing is all about because what we've noticed is even when the marketer we're talking to has enough power to go ahead and do this thing, they're getting shot at left and right as they go forward all the time. They're also being judged by the wrong yardsticks. So they're being judged by metrics that were never built into our program because the other people in the business, key stakeholders, are still using, you know, thinking about different ways of thinking about marketing. So, so they're getting beaten up for something they didn't even try to do. And so what we're trying to do is head that off and say, before we even start, we want to get people in the room, salespeople, key managers, senior managers, and say, this is what we're embarking on. This is why. And this is what you're going to see. And this is how we're going to measure ourselves. And this is why we're measuring ourselves that way. So, you know, really that, that working to align the business around this to us has become much, much more important than I thought it would, would ever become, really does make sense, yet, but I just haven't anticipated it. And, and yet that's hugely challenging to do, particularly as you go up in size of organizations. Uh, you know, the whole concept of alignment is so critical to any business operation, but in fact it's a, it, it's, it's a major uh, flaw in so many different areas. So, so it's, a, it's kind of a catch-22. It's, it's a great part of the theory. But gosh, you get people that are so busy you can't even get them on a conference call for one hour. You get 30 minutes of their time. So part of the challenge that I see is how do you take the triggering events of creating content that has to get delivered? We, we've got commitments that we're, that we're delivering against operationally within the quarter. And how do you start to demonstrate how a little bit better planning of personas, for example, start to open that up so people see 
why do I really need personas or why do I need to understand the buying process and the questions that my content needs to answer at those stages of the buying process and leverage uh, a webinar or a white paper or a video or whatever project, an event that, that to get more out of it that shows people the, the, the bigger possibilities and then start to put the seed in place for there's a better way if you take a strategic process. But if we're going to wait for people to get enlightenment and then say, gee, we need to have strategy and then we need to have alignment and then and then and then. And by the way, then it's going to be 18 months before you get a payoff. I think that's the dilemma that we're all that we're all facing. So just, I mean, Jim, that's a great point. And what we've seen, I think the, the most successful thing that we've been working with uh, the Fortune 1000 companies that we normally work with is one or two day, usually one day, because you're right, everyone's busy, but you get the stakeholders in the room. Because normally what happens is we'll end up talking to the, the champion of this that's trying to say, hey, we need to think differently about the way we market. And before we say, hey, let's do a strategy or, you know, you should execute something, we say, you know what, if you really want this to work, we need to get your key stakeholders in a room for a day. Find a day to do it. Here's your reading material homework. Make sure they do it. We get them in the room. And once we can do that, you're right, it's tough to do, but it is possible to do that. Once you get them in the room and we could say, here's the, because it's a business. This is not a marketing process. This is a business process. Absolutely. This is larger than just talking about marketing. You get those people in the room. We've had, um, I mean, I can't tell you the amount of success we've had by doing that. And then that champion can run through and do that. And everybody understands what they're doing. And we just see more clear, I mean, it's not clear sailing from there, but it's much better than it would have been. And then you can start to build the strategy because you've got buy-in. It's true. There is another uh, a parallel approach, which I think, Jim, you're kind of intimating too. I mean, for me, this, this is becoming an essential step, but there is kind of an under-the-radar thing too. So often we're telling clients, don't turn off current processes, replace them with content marketing processes. And the business is start going to, there'll be a lot of squealing going on. Let it happen. Prove yourself with some pilot stuff that is under the radar. And then you're bringing numbers to the table, not just ideas. So if you have a hard time getting that alignment together early, bring numbers by, by doing some kind of under the radar pilot and say, look what we did here. We, we got 4,000 signups for this thing. We're nurturing these guys towards this. We think 100 are going to come out the other end. Um, and it's just a better conversation to have. So, you know, you don't have to come out with the big brass band saying, we're changing everything we're doing and scare the horses. You can do a bit of both. So there's the evangelizing within the business, but there's also the under the radar, get some results under your belt. Well, I think to your point, Doug, it's not either or. And a lot of people think it's either or. It's not. The content marketing can make all your traditional stuff that much better. So I think that you're, if you can just say, no, we're not coming and replacing, we're just trying to add to what you're already doing, is a much better conversation to have. Yeah. And, and I think, Joe, that, that, may, that raises a, a very interesting point of content marketing makes things better. Because you think of you know, whether we're going to do a social media program, or we're going to do video, or we're going to do anything else, it all depends. It's all content. It's all sharing interesting things. It's all about telling a story. Well, look at, I love to look at what IBM has done for years. This is nothing new. But if you look at the way that they use paid media, their paid media directs to their content marketing. And they've right. done it for years. And they've sure. been incredible. They just had another white ebook, white paper out recently. They're promoting that through paid to get people in and to start building their own asset channels and building their lists. And, you know, to Doug's point, you bring them in here and take them out the other end and then in other ways use it as nurturing. So I love to see that happen. You can use paid and content together. Right. It's interesting because it feels to me like outbound is coming back. That everybody, when content marketing, people got a, a really excited about it. They kind of thought we'd jettison that old stuff and not have to do broadcast aisle at all anymore. But for me, people are realizing, actually, no, we do. Partly because so many other people are doing content marketing. You can't just stick it on the shelf and wait for them to come along. And the other part is just that, you know, basically... Uh, you know, you're going to have to basically you're going to get out there and promote it. But a content offer works better than a, an old style, you know, product offer. So, you know, the two together are actually very, very powerful. I think the other thing that has to be done in parallel, in some respects, I think it's the elephant in the room around content marketing are the challenges that people have in building content. 
you know, when I look at most marketing organizations, especially in larger organizations, but any really, the, the, obviously we talk about the shifting content that's being created. So that creates huge challenges. But the other is that content has often traditionally been outsourced. So now we're asking um, marketing organizations to get much more operational, much more production oriented. And uh, most people don't have a good process for doing that. And so they really get bogged down. Uh, I, I, I'm constantly saying to clients who complain, I'm going to stop blogging. It's just not working for me. Um, and yet we all would say that that's where you start. Figure out how to get that right. Um, you, you know, the, the, the ability to put a better process in place that has us building out quality content on a regular kind of basis, um, you know, is essential. And most people are really still bogged down with the operational issues around building content. And one of the things that we really hit on is you got to have blogs. That's, to our view, that's where it starts. And then you have to syndicate those blogs, which is a lot of this whole publishing rhetoric that we all bandy around. Publishers know that it's about syndication. Um, and, and that gets you ready for all the rest of the content that comes um, behind. But we're really hitting on uh, the ability to use a, a particular process for creating video as a way to crack that time and effort nut around building out uh, content that's very informative, very educational. Talk about storytelling. You know, we want to tell the story. And I think the videos that we're focusing on, we're telling our clients, look, it's 70% about your audio. What are you going to say? And the passion that can come through in audio in a video, and 30% about the visuals that support it. But if you take the right approach, we actually see that you can build those faster, cheaper, uh, in a more tailored way using a kind of a modular approach to building it. And we're really calling it the second best way to create for content marketing. But operationally, we, we've got to help people see that they've got to get their hands around the challenges of building out content on a consistent manner, not just periodically what IDG refers to as random acts of content. And Doug, that comes back to your your strategy, right, is what, how do you know what content to build next and why and therefore how? And, and well, I ask that question and it usually ends the conversation pretty quickly. <laughs> I want to toss a totally different idea out here about search marketing. Everyone wants to get to the top of Google and Google has completely changed, right? It's no longer about just inbound links and keywords. It's about having great content. It's about the recency of your content, and it's about um, the speed of your website. So let's talk about content marketing and organic search. Joe, why don't you give me your thoughts on what's been happening? Well, I think that we've seen with the last few updates that Google's made, um, most recently the, the Penguin update, you're, it's, there's more and more of an emphasis on social sharing. So I think that at least everywhere that we go and marketers we talk to, I think we figured out for the most part how we need to present our content to be found in search engines, whether you have the right URL strings, the right meta tags, the right keyword uh, representation. You know, understand what your keyword is, and in essence, you understand what the problem is you're trying to solve with your content. Those things are happening, and I think that to Jim's point about syndication, then you get into the social sharing part. It's so critically important. You can, that is going to be the rule more than anything else with Google and Bing and everyone else paying more attention to how it's being shared. And then everybody obviously has their, is going to see their own different results, how different those are. I guess it depends on how Google wants to play it. But that's why we have to figure out how we can build those relationships more from a social standpoint and those begin to be shared. I mean, if you ask just from a, you know, look, I don't want people to say, oh, I just want my stuff to be shared or I want to do something on Facebook like a touchy-feely. I'm not into that stuff at all. I want results. I want to know how we're going to use those channels to get marketing results. And if you're looking at it from a search engine standpoint, that's where LinkedIn sharing, Facebook sharing, Twitter sharing, SlideShare, Pinterest, they are all critical because that will help you get rise to the top of Google and be found in search. Google now is what search is. I don't know what search is going to be in the future where we're using all kinds of different areas, you know, Twitter for search, uh, Facebook for search. I don't know how that's going to change, but social is critically important, and that's why you have to build your following 
so that you're putting out great stories and those stories, they're compelled to share those stories and that'll help you get found in, in Google and other search engines. I mean, the good uh, news is that um, Google is using social as a, because it's a strong signal of relevance and one of, of many that they've built up. And what Google's great at is, you know, they spend billions delivering relevance. And so for us, it makes us relax a bit more and because we can focus on the fundamentals of make it relevant and the good things will happen. There's no black art of outsmarting Google anymore as if some, you know, tiny little marketing department somewhere could outsmart a $4 billion, you know, effort to, 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 to find relevance. So, you know, what was true of the old tricks and, and backlinks and all that is true of social too. Make it for your audience, make it great, and the rest will follow. And obviously you do have to do the work to share it and to, to in, encourage others to share it. But first it has to be shareable, you know. And sometimes I think people spend a whole lot of their energy on the second side, the, 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 the side of it of, you know, um, working to get it out into these places. And it feels like the thing itself was kind of rushed, you know. They, they quickly got something on the page and now they're out there waving it everywhere when actually double the time on the front end, make it really good, put in the work, and the rest should sort itself out and, and on Google as well. Well, I think, Doug, I want to go back to what you just said. You know, it's got to be great or make it really good. You know, uh, Joe and Jim, how do these marketing departments who go from meeting to meeting and they're not, you know, how do they make great content? You want to start, Jim? They don't. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, look, 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 every day I read, I read all kinds of evidence that, you know, mo much of the content that's out there, and I, I think, you know, way too much of it uh, just isn't very good. And that, that's, a, that's the problem. And that's really what we're talking about. And it goes back to Doug's point of, you know, if you don't have a content strategy, if you don't understand your, your customers and how they buy and what they're trying, what they need for information, um, then how can you build good content? So, you know, people that are, that are doing that aren't even in the game, in my view. Yeah. Joe, what are your thoughts uh, about I did a did a workshop a couple months ago for 13 B2B technology companies, and every one of those companies had an open position for uh, a managing editor, in-house journalist. Uh, they were looking for content creators. They're looking for storytellers. Jim's yeah. is absolutely right. If you leave the storytelling, I mean, most marketers inherently are horrible storytellers. I mean, let's just put it out there. That's what you're saying, Jim. You're absolutely right. We are we are. Um, you need to think a little bit differently. I mean, if you take your marketing hat off, you put your publishing hat on, you start thinking about readership maybe in a little bit different way. So I think you need to raise the stakes of your in-house and your out, your insourcing and your outsourcing. So we're not going to become a, a awesome, great content marketing um, scalable organization overnight. So that's why we've got to turn to some experts like Doug, like Jim, uh, that know how to do this thing, that can help us not only create internally how we can create this content marketing machine, but you know, outsourcing, there's nothing wrong with outsourcing. I actually think this is the first time that I've seen in a long time where both insourcing and outsourcing are up at the same time because wow. the content demands are so much. This is not an either or, this is both. Who can you leverage on the outside and who can you leverage inside the company to help tell your story more effectively as part of your overall program? So. I think that more and more marketers would be smart to start hiring more really good storytellers. And if those happen to be journalists, then that's fantastic. Yeah, I think that's a great point about the need for storytellers. I, I think, you know, when they're out there, the journalists are out there. Lord knows with what's happened, there's a website called New, Newspaper Death Watch. Lord knows there are good writers out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. For you. How many of those 13 companies would you say have an effective content strategy and have completed the, the foundational work that Doug or I would expect in terms of personas and buying stage analysis and so forth? Oh, I can tell you right off the bat, there were two of them. There were wow. two of those. 13. So yeah. to your point, and to, I think this whole conversation is talking more about content strategy and the importance of it. So automatically a marketing department will say, oh, okay, well, we just need to get these people in and they can help us, but they don't do the work up front. 
there were two of them in particular that were fantastic. They had it all done as well, you, you know, good stuff as I've ever seen. And then they said, okay, now how do we scale this? How do we operationalize that plan? And then they brought them in. So unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of that where they're almost skipping five steps and saying, okay, well, let's just get some smart people to tell stories in there. But they're, it's, it's not integrated or aligned with anything that they're doing from a business process standpoint. It's interesting what you said about in in house outsourcing and insourcing both growing because as I noticed the trend toward uh, building in house departments, I started thinking, should I worry about this? You know, we're a content marketing agency, and I really think the answer is no. That uh, partly because this is such a huge challenge for a long time, people are going to need both, and partly too because if you just hire the editor, which a lot of people will do, those editors are really not bringing content marketing chops. They're bringing some of the key key ones but what they aren't getting is maps to your own business strategy and and you know the role of it so if we were to hire a journalist and we bring journalists in on projects and they're good at storytelling and they're good at getting the story and, and getting under the skin of a market all essential but they don't really get the idea of this agenda you've got you know their agenda from journalism school is get the story get the truth you know um, verify it and there is an agenda here. There is a strategy they need to be the part of and executing. And if you just bring a journalist, I think you won't get it. So we're finding we're helping uh, a lot of clients, including some big ones, get the strategy right. And that's the first bit of outsourcing, bring in someone who gets that so that when they are hiring someone, it's into a strategy um, instead of expecting that person to bring, you know, the, you know, Joe Polices don't grow on trees and, and you know, Joe Chernoff's don't grow on trees and, and Maria Pergolino's people who are natural chief content officer types. Uh, so, so really, the companies have to build a structure for those people. Great stuff. And, and I got to tell you, I could talk to you guys all day, but, but we got to publish this video. So I'm going to go around the room and just ask each one of you for a takeaway from uh, this, this particular event. What is the one thing that people are watching this show? What is the one thing you want people to remember? Doug, why don't you start? What is the one thing you think people should remember about content marketing? I guess that, you know, what's come out of this conversation loud and clear is the strategy point that um, everyone has been focused quite narrowly down onto the next piece of content they need to create, how to make it as good as they can. All that's great, but it needs to zoom back and get some context and strategy in place. And it's certainly this is the age of content strategy. We're, our next big piece is the content strategy checklist just for this reason. It's it's telling the world, okay, now it's time. You know, you've got good at the micro. Now we got to get good at the macro, the big picture. Look at the big picture. Jim, what's your takeaway for this event? So it, the extension of content strategy is to have the strategy address the operational challenges that are going to come next. As we distribute content creation out to the periphery of the organization and beyond, how do we make that an efficient process, preserve quality, meaning good, good messages, good content, uh, that puts a strain. How do we uh, have this be a, a, a regular recurring time to, time to market, content time to market? How do we manage the cost? If there's a one-to-one -one relationship in building a white paper or a video or anything else, and we need to build 50 of them, that, that's not going to work. That's not going to be sustainable. Um, and particularly as relevance comes into play and we start to do the relevance grid, um, so we need the strategy to look also at operationalizing this and look at how are we going to have this uh, so that we can leverage every event, every subject expert, and in fact, every asset that we've created. And when we take those events, build extensible content, and the key to this operationally is reusable assets. And I see very few people that even have a digital asset management system, let alone are thinking about how do we build assets that are reusable? And that's what gets in the way of these operational challenges and makes them more expensive. So I think strategy has to get all the way down into the operational aspect. Good. Last but not least, Joe, what's your takeaway for this event? Oh, those were two good ones. Uh, I guess what I, I have been so focused on this uh, issue of why. And when we talk to our customers, we try to think of, if your content was removed from the marketplace that you're in, from your industry niche, would you leave a hole? And if the answer is no, that means you're not, <laughs> you're not creating amazing information. 
that's going to move the market. That's really what our goal is. We want to be the leading expert in our industry, in our niche. I think that's the goal for every content marketer and should be because that can ultimately drive your business along there. You have a clear strategy. Once you figure out what that story is, you look at what that content marketing platform should be, you're telling amazing stories. So we want to get to the point where we're telling the best of the best. I, with, with all the clutter, uh, with all the ways that consumers can get distracted, if your stories are not the best of breed in your industry, they will probably be ignored. Uh, if they're not ignored today, they will be tomorrow because there's more competition than ever before. So I think you do what Doug says, you focus on, focus on a strategy. You do what Jim was saying. I love you're almost talking about the less is more where you're focusing on really high quality content, like pillar content, and then look at distributing that content in multiple ways. I call that story explosion. I don't know why I just like the term, but taking that story that you have and then exploding that story, all the different ways where your customers are at online. Or really figure out if you can be the why for your customers from an informational standpoint and not just your product and service anymore. So if I'm a marketing department, I'd sit down and have a serious conversation about whether the content that we're creating is making any kind of impact on our customers at all. If you don't know the answer to that or the answer is no, then we've got some work to do. And Joe, I think, I think a great test question for that that we ask clients is, if you took your logo off your content, and replaced it with any of your competitors' logo, would anybody know the difference? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Very good point. Good, two good points, Jim. And, and I like Joe's. If you stopped content marketing, would anyone notice? <laughs> I think that's a perfect takeaway for the show. Doug, Jim, and Joe, i got to thank you. This has been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed having all three of you on the show. And uh, it, it's been great. I like this roundtable format and connecting you with each other. It's been terrific. Works. Thanks, great. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you. Well, that's it for today, folks. Tune in every week to meet new guests. And don't forget, support our sponsors. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. <laughs>